Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, Studio Cell unleashes their third party Unicron. Magic Square readies their own Ghostbusters-themed Optimus Prime, and we get a look at some official renders of WizKids Wave 2 G1 Transformers. Today is Wednesday, March 11th, 2020, and this is episode 372 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that wants to remind people that the coronavirus is transferred in person, so there's no need to stop buying your toys online. I'm your host, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey! It's just me and you. Yeah? That's it. Let's talk Transformers. Dynamic duo. <laughs> yep. It is just us tonight. Uh, Charles is on assignment. Yoshi is on assignment. That just means we don't know where they are. <laughs> All right, we're, going to, we're going to start the show with some sad news. A few days ago, we got the report that uh, David Wise, who was probably one of the biggest writers of the original Transformers cartoon, in addition to a number of other series, passed away from, I believe it was lung mm-hmm. cancer. There was notes posted by his family on his official you know, social media accounts, uh, but we just want to give our condolences to his family and friends and... You know, I guess just thank, thank him for all the work that he did in you know bringing these stories to us. I think he was probably did contributed the most, like Key to Vector Sigma, mm-hmm. Secret of Omega Supreme, number uh, Ninja Turtle stuff. You know, just insane amount of work. Yeah, if you grew up in the '80s and '90s, this guy was part of your childhood. He he wrote a lot of cartoons and. And it's it's really is a shame that we we lost him so young. But cancer sucks, and yeah, that's uh, that's a fact, Jack. You know, condolences again to his family and friends. And I guess let's move on with the show. I guess the next thing we'll talk about is donations. We appreciate the support of everyone that donates via a Patreon or PayPal. Uh, you are our awesome donatrions, and that money helps to. Do pay for things like hosting for the show, uh, hardware, software upgrades. Uh, Daryl just uh, recently benefited uh, with some computer upgrades thanks to the support we get. Thanks to Jeremy just not wanting to put up with my shitty computer anymore. I'm doing Mike a favor because <laughs> Mike does some great work. So everyone that's listening doesn't have to deal with the horrible audio your old computer put out. It did the best it could. It, it did, but it just wasn't very good. That computer so, that I that I just replaced was purchased as a refurb probably eight years ago. So yeah. it was time to go. But I, I as a as a tech person myself, I was able to keep it, you know, in pretty good standing for a lot longer than it probably should have been. You squeezed every inch of life out of it. Every possible inch, yes. And I'm going to try and but, re, re remake that into something else. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that's what we all do. But, you know, thanks to the, the money that we get from Donatrion, that was like we were able to get you a good computer that now sounds great. Sounds really and good. And you have a lot more desk space now. A ton. Yeah. My I think you told me first, uh, you said, what? how big is your monitor? And I said, uh, well, I think it's a 16 inch. And you said, no, no, wait, how big is your monitor for real? And I said, no, it's a 16 inch. I said, no, no, you need a bigger monitor, Daryl. That's that's. That's old school. That's place. That's that's preschool size, and so apparently I need a bigger monitor. Then my wife came down and she's like, "You're still using these old monitors?" She's like, "Even at work, I have two <laughs> monitors." And I'm like, "No, I don't need a bigger monitor. It shows me what I need to see, and that's it." But apparently, it's not big enough, so I have to go out and buy myself a new monitor. That I can do yeah, myself. When, when, so yeah, yeah. When your wife complains about the size, you know you got to do something. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> And with that, just yeah, thanks again. Uh, if um, you want to support us, you can go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Maybe next week we'll have an update on some Patreon goodies. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what's coming. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but also you can support us by buying merch. Uh, we have stuff on our T public store. You can go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop and get shirts, mugs, phone cases, whatever you want with, with our graphics on it or just anything at T public. And, uh, we will get a cut if you go through that link. I believe there's a sale coming, but I didn't look up the exact date. I mean, but there's always there's always a sale. Yeah, there's sales like twice a month. Be looking out for those sales. They're like 35% off usually. Check them out. One of the, the great people, listeners, and also contributors for our show, K-Girl, has a, a Public store. You can go to tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K and get to her store. Uh, she's done a number of, of art pieces for our show. And uh, she's selling tons of great stuff on there, too. So with that, let's get into some toy news. All right. So first up this week, I'm going to ask Jeremy, were you interested in that MP10 repaint into the Ghostbusters uh, truck, the Optimus Prime Ghostbusters repaint? Not particularly. I don't know. Every time I see a white Optimus, I think that it's supposed to be Ultra Magnus. You're supposed to say yes. Yes, Daryl. Yes, I was very much interested. I, I I hate that I missed out on getting it. Well, good news, because now you can get the same thing, only tinier, uh, because Magic Square is putting out a repaint of their Light of Justice in Ghostbuster colors. So this is their little... Uh, their, Legend scale uh, figure of Optimus Prime only repainted into the colors of that Ghostbuster edition MP10. So there are no emblems for Ghostbusters on it. That's something you'll have to take care of with, you know, repro labels or something like that. But yeah, this is kind of cool. It's it's small and it's got all the the cool stuff that Light of Justice came with, except the trailer. No trailer. So. You know, you'll have to be imaginative, perhaps something in the future. If this sells well, you know, maybe they'll, they'll be forced to make a trailer for it. But as of right now, it's just the Optimus Prime. Obviously, Jeremy, you, you mentioned that you think it might look like a an, uh, an Ultra Magnus, but deep down... Well, this one has a lot of red on it. It's got an awful lot of red, green windows. You know, the the head is gray with yellow eyes. It's 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 pretty different. Would uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of cool, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of I like what they did here. I, I know why they did the green. I just don't think the combination of the red, white, and green and gray really go together. I think if they had made the windows the same shade of like bluish gray as the legs, okay, I think that would have looked a lot better. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I know why they did green. Um, makes you think Slimer, but this thing looks really cool. I'm I'm wondering they they put out the like the gray dead Optimus Prime, right? I believe so. Yeah. So you could like have him busting himself. Oh, I see what you're going with. I, I do hate that they didn't do any kind of proton pack type accessory. Well, I don't think anything That's... similarly came with the, with the, any, any of the other magic square light of justice figures. So it was hard. They weren't going to yeah. make anything new. I mean, maybe that's something in some other third party can do is just like a pro proton packs for transformers. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. There are no uh, pre-order prices up for it yet, but uh, we can pretty much assume it's going to be the same price as uh, all the other ones for this guy. And uh, from what I can tell... No, there's pre-order. Is there? I, I mean, I see all the links, but they all just go to the main page of the site. No, it's um, $44.99. Oh, cool. All right. There you go. $44.99. I see it now on TF Source. So, yeah. Right on. Yes. That's not a bad price no, for it. No, it's cool. And, you know, with... From everything I've seen, this, this is a good, like, the, the bones of this figure are, are good. Yeah. And this is just a different paint job, so. Well, I do have a second topic, and uh, and this one. What else is there to talk about this? Well, one? I mean, just one thing came across my my uh, desk today, or this week, and it's, uh, it's from a brand new company that I've never heard of before, ever. It's called O1-Studio, and it's their figure called Cell. And it's got a weird look to it. I feel like I've re I recognize it somewhere. It's odd because this figure, it has no head. Uh, and it's got some weird trumpet-looking things on the shoulders. Um, it's it's a really awkward figure, but it, it's it's just so familiar. If you can't, if you haven't noticed, this is uh, Zeta Toys' core 
core star is what they called it actually core star the pictures that they've been putting out are actually kind of a joke because they they've wanted to to just kind of throw a bit of a a punch at the litigation that took took them down at the start so they've had to create this entire new company called 01 studio market the figure under an entirely other name um but this is their unicron that unicron that third party unicron that we were all talking about uh before christmas and it's uh it's back it's in color now so yeah they're showing it without a head the uh the site that we're we're kind of showing here does have a pre-order price on it they're saying that the full price is going to be approximately $300 US. Um, you can put down a pre-order of $3. This is from Show Z Store. And uh, you can definitely get a pre-order for 3 bucks. That's not hard. Their, their description of the figure does say that the head will be included. So don't worry about that. Existing pre-orders, that if you did pre-order it through, uh, um, through them for Zeta uh, Toys' core star will you know be moved over to this one so you don't have to worry about re-pre-ordering it so yeah it uh, it looks like it's back uh jeremy what are your thoughts on this are you happy it's back do you not care it's you know it's much cheaper than the the hasbro one i figured it was going to be back it's back sooner than i expected Mm -hmm. you know i thought they were probably going to let the hasbro one come and go sure but this one the hasbro one didn't come out till 2021 this one's going to come out in august that's true i don't know i mean i guess they figure people that got the Hasbro one, they're locked in. So you're not really competing now because you can't get the Hasbro one even if you wanted it. Yeah, that's true. There are some differences I'm seeing, like, you know, aside from the obvious, you know, head. Right. Trumpet things. But it looks like there's like some ports on the side in planet mode that I didn't see in the other pictures. Oh, okay. You see that little like orange round thing? There's like. Yes. Yep, I do. I'm Where looking before, at the. Uh, I don't remember seeing them. I'm looking at the prototype images now, and yeah, I do see what you're talking about. Um, yeah, so yeah, it looks like they've added a little bit of there, a little bit of something. So, yeah, you know, I wonder if that's just places to put things like the the wings and the the horns and stuff like that. Right. Well, uh, like uh, we di- I didn't mention here, but we were talking before the show started that uh, this new image is here from uh, uh, Shozy Store. Do not show the figure with the with its wings that were originally shown in prototype form. It doesn't mention anything about them being included, but I mean they're likely going to be included. Yeah, they're going to include the head. They're going to include the exactly. Head. So I'm assuming that there's that these ports that you're seeing are going to be where the the wings tap in to make the uh, the little the ring around it. So yeah. Oh, I, I do kind of see them on the prototype. They're just. Since that's a, that's a digibash, they were just colored okay to match like on his legs. You can see them. Yeah. So okay. Right on. But yeah. Um. So so the prototype price. I mean, the original or the Haslab Unicron was what was it six hundred and fifty or six seventy five? Yeah, somewhere was, around there. Yeah. I mean, that's a it was, but it's bigger, right? This one's obviously not as big. They're they're saying that the height of this one here is. 45 centimeters or 17.72 inches. The Haslab one was 27 inches. So a mm-hmm. whole 10 inches taller, it, right? Yeah. That's that's a that's a lot of height. Is this a suitable replacement? I mean if it's it's cheaper, it's way cheaper. Like I mean if if you were looking to get something like this, would this be something like if you were looking for a Unicron, would this be something you'd be interested in? I think it would. Definitely on price, but also uh, they don't have the picture here, but I saw it. I, I can't remember if it was Twitter or Facebook, but like his, the chest part of it opens up. Okay. And it looks like the kind of interior of Unicron from like those season three episodes. Right. Where they went and, you know, you had all the TVs and stuff. It was kind of molded to look like that on the inside. I think that's a nice touch. Mm-hmm. I did see that too. And, uh, and I, I don't have those right now, but I did see them today somewhere. I think this will be the Unicron for everyone else that didn't get in on the HasLab. I, I just, I hope that you're still able to make this, you know, headless mode. Cause I think it actually, th- despite, you know, kind of how hilarious it looks, I think it does look kind of cool. The, the amount of neck on this thing, uh, you know, about regardless of being, you know, headless and kind of funny, but 
it's it's just it's so much neck that it just looks ridiculous the Mm -hmm. The figure itself, I was always really impressed, even in prototype form. And we talked about it back when this thing was being talked about, you know, originally. They found a way to make this figure uh, collapse all of that extra junk that was used in making the planet mode. Like, all that, all those panels disappear in robot mode. Mm -hmm. You just see a couple little pieces here and there that are worked really well into the, into the robot mode. You know, some of the some of the outside panels get used as feet uh, pedestals, or, or you know, pl- you know, yeah. and then there's some on the insides of the knees. Um, but really, everything else is just kind of turned inside out. On an engineering level, I am just astounded by this, and I think I talked about it originally because they they showed it. They had a YouTube video that was immediately taken down when all the litigation happened. But the the creation of the shoulders out of just turning the outs, outside panels inside out was is genius, and I really just want to work on that and experience it. I have to figure out a way to afford this thing. So yeah, but I'm 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 stoked that this thing's back. The next week or two are going to be interesting to see if Hasbro cares now, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see where this goes. You know, I could see Hasbro caring a lot more when they are trying to get their crowdfunding thing to to go through. Oh yeah, of course. And now that that's kind of months behind, and they did it, I'm I'm wondering what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so we're going to follow this thing. Uh, I'm definitely following it, and we'll see. For any listeners out there who are elated to see this thing back, let us know what you think. If anybody out there is super pissed that this thing is back. Let me know what you think. Uh, we're looking for a discussion. This is this is interesting. This thing is kind of back from the dead, which we never really kind of thought it was dead, but we're happy to see it. But let us know what you think. But that's it. What I that's all I brought this week, uh, Jeremy. What do you uh, What do you got for us? Uh, well, the first thing I have here is um, we have official renders of Wave Two of the Wiz Kids uh, miniatures, the the deep cut miniatures. And these are these are the like unpainted uh, little like what inch and a half, two inch tall figures that you know you get to paint yourself. Mm-hmm. This includes RC Frenzy, which I'm guessing this is actually Rumble because he has the pile drivers. Ironhide, Laserbeak, and and Soundwave. They have like unpainted and painted versions of these renders, and I think these look great. I'm I'm probably gonna put in a pre order and get these. Just like I got the first ones, even though I haven't finished painting them all. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the selection of characters? I think you're you're going through some of the more recognizable characters after you got you know the first four out of the way. So I mean, we talked about it before that uh, there's some really good characters here, but I would have picked others for Wave Two. Mm-hmm. Soundwave, I mean, Soundwave is a must, and he's just yeah, that's awesome. Um, I like the uh, the Digibash here of you know him in his colors. Ironhide's he's he's good. I don't know whether I'd make him wave two, but you know he's good. Uh, RC is a great character. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it, she's a wave two character, but definitely up there. And uh, I mean, she does have a, an official figure coming out. She does. So, so maybe they're just kind of it, it's it's this year of RC. So um, and the uh, the tape tape guys here, Frenzy or Rub, Rumble. I mean. Frenzy was the toy, so I mean, if you want to qualify this as a toy, it's Frenzy. Um, and Laserbeak, uh, they're all great characters. Laserbeak featured a lot in the show, but again, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd prefer full-sized characters for Wave 2. So yeah, but I think the, the two tapes come together. I, I think you're right. So, yeah, but uh, but yeah, so no, I, I, I do think you're right. But I still, I would, I would much rather prefer like a full size character there. Mm-hmm. In my, in my head, the only true Wave Two character here is Soundwave. Yeah, I would have liked to get a Soundwave and a Blaster in a pack, or in you know a Wave together. Sure, Blaster is a cool character. Yeah, I mean, there are so many, there are so many great, great characters. Um, like a Jazz, Jazz is an awesome character. Sideswipe mm-hmm. is a great character. Prowl even. I think Ratchet featured more in the show than Ironhide did. Ironhide and, and them are almost interchangeable, right? So 
Yeah. With the, with a ratchet or sorry with an iron hide, we're probably going to get a very similar variation for ratchet. I don't know. There's 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 so many great ones out there for uh, for Autobots Decepticon wise. Heck, there's I don't know. You can do a cone head. A cone head. I mean, you're gonna have to get the rest of the seekers. So I mean, each wave should probably have a seeker in it in some different pose. Yeah, I mean, you gotta figure out how to to reuse those those models you have, like you said, different pose, mm-hmm. just some way. Cause you, you want to get those other characters and, you know, just getting like three, um, three star screams. Yeah. It just, you know, while it's not, it's not expensive. You would like to have them look a little bit different. Yeah. These are fun. Uh, I'm sure we'll show them off when we get them in hand. It is funny that in the, just in the article here on, a TFW, they write rumble and they strike it out and then have frenzy. Mm. Yeah. He's the blue guy, but he has pile drivers, <laughs> but whatever. I'm uh, moving on. We have a Hasbro sec filing. Uh, this is talking about their acquisition of entertainment one, which um, we've talked about, but also talking about the current COVID-19 virus um, outbreak and how it's going to affect them. Fortunately for Transformer fans, most of the Transformer products are uh, manufactured in Vietnam, not China. So in the short term, not much impact for Transformer stuff. But it's so many things have shut down. It's going to have like throughout the entire market, it's going to have an impact one way or another. Um, so don't be surprised if like, you know, your your scarce toys that you, you can't ever find are even more scarce. And I personally wouldn't be surprised if prices go up. Mm-hmm. But also talking about the Entertainment One stuff, um, it's probably more for alt mode, but we'll talk about it here. The Paramount Pictures Agreement comes to an end in 2022 unless it's extended. I don't remember hearing that before. Hmm. Maybe not. I mean, it would so, have been back in 2017, so you'd have to go back and listen to shows in 2017. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember us talking about um, that, but you know, if they're going to do a Bumblebee sequel then we're you know they'll probably have to they'll probably extend it because i don't i don't see a bumblebee movie coming out you know until like right around that time Mm -hmm. and but they do also have the snake eyes movie coming out so i don't know i think overall they've been pretty happy with their deal with paramount so it's been going a long time wouldn't surprise me to see it extended yeah but do you have any thoughts on particularly the manufacturing stuff the manufacturing stuff i mean that's there's been things that have affected the manufacturing of transformers and and toys in general through throughout you know the history of toys really oil prices oil prices being the main one um but you can go back to uh to what is it tin toys and and, and the mm-hmm. original basically the original toy yeah and them having to say okay we're not going to make toys out of tin anymore because we need the metal for war effort right so right. yeah the the main one that we've been dealing with over the last decade or or two has been oil prices going up and up and up designers and, and companies trying to find ways to get more out of the uh, plastic that they're, they're making out of the oil and uh, that uh, will now be able to, you know, produce a good, f- a good product for the same amount of money. Problem is, is that they're, they're spending more time trying to do more and the, the prices just keep going up. And you see, you might watch the news as I do and you see that, well, the price of oil is, is down fairly low, you know? So, you know, in your head, you're like, why isn't the price of gas low? And why isn't the, you know, why aren't the toys, the price of toys low? And, and that's, that's a nice, that's a nice question. And, and, and unfortunately I don't have an answer for that. I wish I did, but that's, I think comes down to a lot of, uh, corporate, uh, well, let's say greed, but there's probably another more business savvy answer for it. There's inflation. No, nothing is just a black and white issue. Exactly. But, uh, you know, right now when it comes to the the COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, people are taking uh, leaves of av- absences from their workplace to try and keep themselves uh, healthy. It's government mandated in China right now in a lot of la- locations. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, – people can't go to work. They can't build their, build their toys, you know, and they can't send them over. So – that's that's just the way it is. You got to deal with it. We'll start seeing the effects here um, in uh, well a few weeks probably. I, I know I'm happy to work from home. <laughs> well, your kid brings home all the diseases anyway. 
Yeah, that's the problem. You have a kid, they they you know, roll around in diseases and bring them home. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, that is it for all the toy news. Let's move on to trips to the store. This is the part of the show where we show off all the awesome Transformers merch we get we got this week. Uh, we do this as a video on YouTube so that we can show off what we got, but we also include the audio here in the podcast. So keep li- listening and then go over to YouTube to actually see what we got in high definition. So without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. I'm going to start because I have one thing and I know Daryl has tons. So th- this is something that I got at C2E2 and I couldn't find in time for the show next week, which is great because I would have nothing else to show off this week. So New York Comic Con at the Honcholo booth, um, I, I picked up this guy, which is the um, the Ravage pin, which is essentially Ravage in cassette mode. He doesn't do anything. He's just a tape or he's just a pin. But this time uh, they had... I'm not sure if this was new for this time or if I just didn't get it last time, but I got Soundwave, which is a much smaller pen than um, the Ravage, but he's shiny. He's He looks great. And I'm really liking the Honcholo pens. They they are a good size. Um, actually, they're really close to the same size, but they, they have a good weight to them. They, they have the double pens in the back, so they're not going to fall off easy. Uh, the Ravage has the packaging to kind of look like the modern toys, but the Soundwave, you get that classic G1 look, and then the back of the, the little paper in here has the G1 box art. So they know their stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the Honcholo guys were, they, they, did not, they weren't able to make it out to <coughs> Chicago, like the uh, Brandon, the owner. So I wasn't able to interview him. We're hoping Emerald, well, I guess Emerald City is not going to happen. So... Yes, she was going to meet up with them at Emerald City, but I guess that's not going to happen now. Uh, but we'll next time we're at a convention where they're there, we'll be sure to hook up with them. That's all I got this week. I'm I'm really digging these pens. I, I think they're they're a fun way to kind of show show your fandom, just like on backpacks and jackets and stuff. I have one problem with those pens. What they're not in scale. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they they are not. Transformers and has I, been all about scale right from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and I don't have the Unicron pin handy, but that one, that one's big. It's like a, a few inches across. Mm-hmm. Still not in scale. So, what do you have? Well, first thing this week, uh, I have a little bit of concern. You haven't fixed your comic book behind you. <laughs> you need to fix that. I am concerned for its welfare. It's gonna fall again. Or like that that one strip like of that three M tape is not super sticky anymore. Well, let's hope it doesn't break or ruin the book. Um, speaking of, bo- this is what happens when you're not in a house like you are. What are you, you, what are you talking about? I have walls. You have walls. I know. I just don't really want to nail into my wall. It's easy to fix. A little bit of putty, done. Um, speaking of books, I do have a book this week. <gasps> Galaxies number five. I think we're going to talk about this yeah we didn't have a review copy when we recorded the show last no week. it came out the next day <laughs> so sad uh this is uh the alex milne cover um and uh yeah we're going to talk about this on alt mode so stay tuned for that uh as far as toys go um i was able to knock off the the rest of the existing revenge of the fallen constructicons uh, so this is Mixmaster. He is the sixth of the eight that are going to be able to, or that are made to fill, or f- uh, what is it, f- complete Devastator. The last two aren't out yet, so I get to take a break on Studio Series for a minute. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. He looks pretty cool. Uh, he he becomes the face of Devastator. So if you know. If all goes to shit, I uh, I still have a torso and and, a, and an arm, I think. Both legs, but, you know, no way to attach them. But, yeah, so Mixmaster, he's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> I... Oh, no! 
<laughs> uh, I got too much too much stuff here. This is my second reaction figure. Uh, this is Megatron. He looks awesome. Pretty kick-ass in his reaction figure mode. Very cartoony. Very, very cartoony, yeah. So Megatron here. Uh, only Soundwave and Bumblebee, Jazz, and Starscream remain for me. Optimus Prime has already been bought, and he tests well. So uh, I don't know whether I'm going to go completist on this line. It's expensive. So I just wanted to pick up a couple figures. The packaging mm. is really good. Like, it's it's a full-on card back, and, you know, it's done really well. I'm considering rebuying an Optimus just to keep an Optimus in the box or in the on the card because they're so nice looking. So, mm. yeah, I really like the uh, like the shiny little f- foil that they've done around the words. Picked up a couple toys this week. Um, not sure if you are aware, but I am a big fan of Transmetal Megatron. You've mentioned that a couple times. Yeah, but he sucks as a toy. and <laughs> Yeah, you've mentioned that too. So I have bought myself this guy. This is not Transmetal Megatron, but it's the same mold. This is Armada Predacon. It is, it, it's exactly the same mold, just done in plastic that won't explode. Yeah. So no, no, like, vacuum metal. Nothing. Or, it's just yeah. actual, just regular run-of-the-mill plastic I, as far as the head sculpts the same the head sculpts exactly the same it's just colored differently so i'm happy about that but yeah it's not the transmittal megatron colors oh well i was just really stoked about the the transformation that's the engineering wise of it it makes a really cool looking dinosaur yeah. so prove, proves that the mold itself was solid oh yeah for sure so <laughs> the execution on the first time wasn't good. no, just the plastic sucks. I've got myself a couple Earthrise figures to show. Uh, the first one here is Voyager Grapple, and he is he's awesome. Voyager Grapple is really good, and they did a really good job on this figure for uh, for the Generations line. Earthrise is just a kicking it out of the park. The one thing that you do have to to kind of watch out for is everybody's been posting about it and I figured I'd show it here. So when you are transforming this guy, he does have these two pegs here on the back and these two pegs go into the bottoms of his feet here when he transforms. So there's little peg holes right there. These pegs are really tight and I don't know whether you can see but they're they're not they're not made super well. If you push them into this these these po- these holes here, they get jammed in there, and then you're trying to to twist this thing to get it out, and you snap them off. The best thing you can do is is test it when you get it. If you get one, test how tight these pegs are, and if they're super duper tight, like all of them are, just take a little bit of a blade, like an exacto blade or something, and just shave off a little bit of this, and just shave off a little bit. Try it again, and you really, I mean. You don't need it to be super duper tight to hold the alt mode, but you need it to be somewhat tight. So just keep the keep shaving it down until you're able to kind of push it in. It holds and you can pull it out. There's no spring on this thing. It's not going to pop itself back out. You just want to get it in there and have it hold. It needs to have mm-hmm. some kind of anchor for itself when you put it into the into the back there. So, yeah, you especially don't want it to snap off while it's still in the peg. Well, that's what it's doing, right? Oh, so, yeah. That, that's a pain in the ass to get out. Yeah. So, and also a lot of people for, forget to look at this. Ratchet, or sorry, uh, Grapple's got a hand here um, on his on his left hand, but he does actually have the, the little blaster that he usually oh. keeps there. And this is actually on his, it's on the, the extendo arm on the back of him here. So most people forget to look there. And it's when you get it out of the box, it's sitting right there. So people will say, "Where, where's this little gun thing? I don't have one." Look on, look on the back of your your thing, and because it's that's right where it is. So that's grapple. And the last one I got is Wheeljack. I picked up Wheeljack as well, and Wheeljack's just a great figure. He's real fun. Um, his gun, his gun kind of sucks. It's it's very small, you know. And this is literally the only accessory he comes with. But he's a good size. Yes, yes, I dropped it. Um, 
but yeah, he's a good size. His little like wings or whatever are built in, so don't try and rip them off or twist them. They only go one way and only a certain amount, right? So it's uh, don't try and twist them too far. But no, he's he's really fun and uh, and a really good uh, mold. And I can totally see how they would have used this to make the uh, uh, run amok and and uh, run about. So yeah, mm. really fun mold. And uh, yeah, totally recommend Wheeljack. He's good. I'm still upset that we didn't get a Cybertronian mode wheeljack. Yeah. What are you going to do, right? Yeah. So is that all you got? That's it. Uh, yeah, I think. Isn't that enough? I mean, come on, man. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right. Uh, that wraps up Trips to the Store, and that wraps up Transmissions, because we have no feedback this week. Uh, we also have no convention news. Nothing if you would like to leave us feedback, please go to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback and uh, let us know what your thoughts were on uh, things like that, that no longer Zeta Toys, Unicron, and, and some of the other items we talked about this week. We, we would love to hear your thoughts on them, have that conversation going. So transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback will have links where you can send us text feedback or almost guaranteed to be on the show voicemail. So mm -hmm. everything is right there. Coming up, if you're a Donatrion for the show, you are going to be getting some bonus Empire of Rust episodes that Charles and I recorded with Mike and uh, one of his Empire of Rust compatriots. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to record and can't wait to see what you guys think of it. So be looking out for that in the, the Patreon RSS feeds. And I guess that is it for transmissions this week. So Daryl. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for recording with me this week. No problem. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. It's, it's more intimate transmissions. Oh, did the lights just go out here? Oh, and now I can go put my pants back on. <laughs> Where did this wine and candle thank come from? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thanks for listening. Bye. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Oh, wait. In the Discord, a wild Charles appears. So on his mobile device. Might have some update. So this, might, this part might get Likely edited will out. be edited we'll out. See. He is currently typing. Yeah. Charles is a slow typer. And we're we're I'm still assuming he's not. Yeah, he's it. on his phone. Charles, I really need the Jeopardy music. Charles is with me somewhere. in Russia. <laughs> we fighting the coronavirus in person vodka. <laughs> with vodka and stick. You know, it'll help sterilize everything. It's high alcohol. <laughs> All right then. Just making up my own noise. And we're and, back! And that's the, actually the end of the show. Huh? No feedback. You guys are slacking off. We've had some good feedback weeks I know. this week. What the hell? <laughs> where's, Blaming where's John 4X Levengood? John 4X Levengood, come on, man. It's all Canadians in that? here. And Yakko. <laughs> yeah. What you doing, eh? <clears throat> you hosers how you going all right i will wrap this show up all right that's fine you did much better than the train wreck that will be alt mode <laughs>